The preservation movement started by saving and restoring houses. It takes a community for an idea to take root and grow. Chris King, the executive director of Charleston Preservation Society, talked to me about Charleston's colorful past, a lot about its present, and how we can all move as a community into our future. The Preservation Society of Charleston is actually the first grassroots preservation organization in the country. We've been working since 1920 to really preserve and create the city that you experience today. Our founder was a woman named Susan Pringle Frost. She was an amazing lady. She was the first woman in South Carolina to have a real estate license. She had a great affinity for the houses of Charleston and really sought to protect and stop the, the demolition of many houses. So she would purchase lots of houses and, and fix them up and find families uh, who would fix them up and, and sort of started the, the preservation movement in this country. Because of the efforts of Susan Pringle Frost and a lot of the early residents of Charleston, Charleston's one of the most remarkably intact historic cities in America. There's nowhere else that you can go and walk the streets and truly be amongst the 18th and the 19th centuries like you can in Charleston. Charleston also has completely unique houses in the single house. We're in a single house today and, and you don't see these anywhere else in the country. They're truly unique to Charleston. So historically, the society was really focused on the preservation of these houses that we all enjoy today. Our focus has really shifted. You know, the city of Charleston has changed a lot, and a lot of that change isn't necessarily positive. And we feel that Charleston needs a plan for the future, so our work is really focused on delivering that plan. We have a vision and a plan for where we'd like to see Charleston 100 years from now. And we believe that livability is the most important thing in Charleston, because at the end of the day, it needs to be a better place to live than it is to visit. The society pretty much works with every builder and homeowner uh, and architect downtown on projects ranging from small renovation projects to the large scale projects such as some of the new hotels and apartment buildings. So we're attending over 500 meetings a year, working with the neighborhoods, working with the community, trying to ensure that the growth that we do get is done in a way that's additive to Charleston and makes Charleston a better place to live as well. Historic buildings are, are very unique. We don't renovate historic buildings like we renovate contemporary houses. You really need to understand what you're looking at. You need to understand what the house is. The house we're in today is a, is a combination of 1840s design and detail with some Victorian updates. So really it requires a, a really learned eye to understand what it is that you're looking at. And then you need to make the value judgments about how you preserve what is significant about the house. But also you have to update it, right? You have to have kitchens, you have to have closets and bathrooms. And there are sensitive ways to do that and insensitive ways, and we obviously promote the former. The most important thing that a community that's going through a lot of change rapidly like Charleston is that people are educated and engaged. People need to understand what's happening in their community before it happens. Uh, when I took this job, I'd have so many people come up and say, how did you let that project happen? How did that get done? And I would always answer by saying, there's a process. You need to engage in that process. Come to the Board of Architectural Review meetings, come to the Zoning Board, come to the Planning Commission, and speak on behalf of your community. But there's an incredible disconnect, I think, between residents and, and these processes. So our work is really about bridging that gap. It's really about making people aware of projects while they're still in the design development phase and encouraging them to get involved. As an organization, we do three things. We do advocacy work, education work, and engagement. Community engagement, I think, is the most important thing. And so our educational programs really do two things. They educate people, but they also provide the critical funding we need to do our work. The fall tours of homes that we do in October is our single largest fundraiser. But it's also one of the best ways to actually engage in what's happening in Charleston because, you know, number one, you could put your house on tour, which is an incredible gift. Number two, you could be a volunteer. We have a network of hundreds of volunteers. It's a great way to learn a tremendous amount of history about these houses in the city and actually get to meet a bunch of people and it's a lot of fun. And then third is actually coming on tour. 
You know, if you live in Charleston and haven't experienced the district or been on tour before, you know, we urge you and challenge you to come on tour. Come experience what historic Charleston is all about. We do things like photography workshops. If you want to learn how to take those beautiful pictures of downtown Charleston, we have classes for that. So we really hope that we offer a little bit for everybody. I'm Christopher King, Executive Director of the Preservation Society. If you care about the future of the city of Charleston and want to get involved, get engaged with us. Call us at 843-722-4630 or check out our website at preservationsociety.org.